Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Becoming the 1% Podcast. My guests today, or I guess I should say guests today, are Andrew from Advanced Muscle Mechanics and Brandon Midwest Kong Copeland. So, together we have one of the more interesting uh, podcast episodes I think I've ever had in my whole life. We talk about the startups of both uh, the launch pad, which is a piece of equipment that the two of them have collaborated on for a more safe and more improved bench press. We talk about uh, Brandon's beginnings, how he came out of a very, very tough situation, got himself up, started the uh, Muscle Bay Fitness Gym, which is actually a fi- uh, gym on the middle of an island. And uh, together we talk about how all that has shaped him, his attitude toward fitness, and just everything going forward. Enjoy the episode. Little disclaimer about this episode, it's a little graphic, just so you guys know if you guys are squeamish or if you have the possibility of fainting with the mere mention of blood or anything along those lines. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa! Hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Eli. Whoa. Hey, 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 hey. So, <laughs> our very talented podcast producer Eli is not good with medical little disclaimer uh this episode probably should come with some kind of a warning uh oh, for for the oops. content uh mm-hmm. Eli just just came back from passing out Eli passed out uh, so we <laughs> just look I didn't even see it happen I thought you were taking a nap no. I look over at you and you're like oh no oh no 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 he's going shit out of me man that's yeah, right yeah, it was man. behind you yeah. you didn't even see I, that it was I going around he's limp I'm well like, I thought I thought he was like you know kind of like straight like oh my god <laughs> <damn. laughs> tough, <laughs> tough tough crowd shit <laughs> Maybe watch out for this episode, especially toward the end. As you'll see, we had a little bit of an ordeal here in the episode itself. Hope that gives you a little bit of excitement, though. Enjoy. All right, guys. So how I wanted to really kick this off. First, I want you to introduce yourselves. I want to hear what you guys are doing. Of course, y'all are very well known in this industry, but I want you to treat it as if no one has any idea who you are. I want to know where you come from. I want to hear about Advanced Muscle Mechanics. The partnership that's formed from that and let's just take it from there maybe we should start with brandon let's do it and kind of mold into we, yeah we start, totally we would not mention that oh. name okay all right <laughs> and for t call i don't want him to get any <laughs> nothing <laughs> can't give him that credit now i'm ready to take do. it away bro let's do right. it <laughs> well uh brandon mill is called coven from toledo ohio uh to be in to be honest with you man i, I came into this industry, to be honest, by accident. I uh, I uh, fought mixed martial arts for 11 years, and I'm talking about when it was not the cool days. We was sleeping in, we used to rent a conversion van or whatever we could rent to go, and it was just go to these places, and I fought in bingo halls. This is 2005 when it was starting, when they were still trying to ban it from cable TV and stuff like that. And it was literally, you show up, if you weigh 200 pounds and he weighed 220, y'all match up. We brought our own gloves and that's how it started. So it, you know, when it got to the, to the times where it was cool, like the ultimate fighter came out, I was already on my last couple legs, which it wasn't even about money. It was just about mental health for me, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For oh, me, I can imagine. it was mental health. A lot of things that, you know, me and Sam endured growing up and a lot of the things that we seen, things that happened to me personally, uh, being almost murdered in 2004. So I just kind of needed Whoa. to outlet, you know? So got into mixed martial arts, but Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was when I got into that in late 05, mm-hmm. that was more fulfilling than fighting. You know, wrestling, take down, yeah. punch, punch, punch. All right. You know, I was a bouncer. Yeah. That was the protocol anyway. So <laughs> Brazilian Jiu Jitsu taught patience, strategy, uh, brain over brawn. Mm-hmm. So for me, that was way more fulfilling than being you know a meathead fighter sure so when that was over with i still you know i still train brazilian jiu-jitsu i'm a black belt now um i've been a black belt since 2019 whoa so um it took me i spent you know the belt system is interesting it's a lot of it's a lot of the p word you don't want to use the politics (laughs) you you edit that that out (laughs) but unfortunately that's a part of that's a part of jiu-jitsu just like everything else and i'm when i get when i start to understand that how so for we, people who are it, outside of the world well for for those people who who know it you know you get black belts sometimes make people think they cooler than now you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i always tell people you could be the best black belt in the world and you still an asshole because it's only one percent of us to train so why do i care about being cool just for the one percent when i can be a good person to everybody mm. so just in a, you know people use that as a catalyst to 
to be the the greatest person ever and I'm a black bone jiu-jitsu. Yeah, well, who really gives a shit like about that other than the people in the gym? Sure. And at the point at the end of the day, don't treat Brazilian jiu-jitsu like you need to take it. You don't need to take it. You don't need to take jiu-jitsu. You can leave here, go in your cool fucking gym and do whatever you do and never train jiu-jitsu in your life. <laughs> We as black belts, we as jiu-jitsu instructors, we want you to take it. We want you to have a good experience. At least we should. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people make it this clicky. It's almost like a mean girls club. You know, a lot of people in the jiu-jitsu <laughs> community don't like me. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. A lot of them don't like me because I tell that part. I, the way they treat women, the way they treat this X, Y, and Z. Like, come on, dude. You, come on. Yeah. Is we supposed to be, people use the word brother and family a lot. And for people like me and Sam, grew up in the neighborhood, you know, grew up in ground gangs and stuff like that. When you say those things, we know how valuable that is. And we take heed to that because a lot of times, brother, don't necessarily mean blood. Yeah. So when somebody considers us that, that's what you got. And when we in this space, a lot of people come into jujitsu because they were molested or abused physically by whatever, domestic violence, they shouldn't have that experience of somebody creeping on them or... They shouldn't have experience of having to jump through hoops just to be a part of this clique. And, and that's just, you know, it was it was unfulfilling for me at that point. So I started my own. And then uh, me and Sam always had a dream of wanting to open a gym. So we opened a gym on in Putin Bay, Ohio. Uh, and That's so cool. What's it called? Putin Bay, Ohio. So it's an island. Believe it or not, it's an island in Ohio. On about? on uh in the middle of Lake Erie. I'm so saying, oh, a people, literal, a literal. Yeah, island in yeah. Ohio. People, you like, it's islands in Ohio. Yeah, it's, <laughs> for six months out of the year is an island. There. <laughs> so we opened from May to you know October, and uh, it me Sam, my girl Ashley. Like we we did a, we did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it was never a gym there, so yeah. we did it. You know what I'm saying? And then we put it out there, and it was funny how me and Sam work. It's like, hey man. Let's open a gym on Putin Bay. All right, how are we gonna do it? I don't know. And nine months later, we do it. You know, that's just that. That, that is how that's so just how me and him operate. So, Very you know, cool. then I got into this fitness industry, and I mean, it's a lot I can touch on in that. So I'll probably pass to Andrew if you want to well, get into yeah, the totally. good stuff. <laughs> well, I was gonna say you might want to touch on it a little bit more, just how we kind of came together, and then I can kind of take it from there because I add to the story overall. I yeah. think that you have a history before me and before the company so i was introduced to it by a guy named cali muscle yep yeah yeah so, very familiar yeah yeah you mentioned that you got to unpack that a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good guy awesome dude <laughs> so i got introduced to it by him and he wanted to do uh i actually met him before via facebook live i used to do facebook lives around the COVID and the quarantine okay and he just popped on one day and then he started talking and we started doing lives together mm. We exchanged information, and then 2019 is when, or no, 2020 is when I went to see him, and we did a video with him and Big Boy. Shout out to Big Boy, one of the coolest guys, one of the realest guys in the industry. I know he catch a lot of flag, but I've wanted to meet him for a while. Yeah. My my little brother got to meet him. That guy uh, in Big California. Boy is a Big Boy is a great dude, mm. real good dude, man. Um, and uh, that's how I met him, and we shot a jujitsu video. And then me and Callie worked out together after, and then he talked. He said, you know, you can do this. He gave me the bro talk. Hmm. And uh, unfortunately, me and Callie are no longer bros. No. And never was. But so that's how I got introduced. That's how, you know, C.T. Fletcher, that's how I did the videos with him and developed a relationship. It's about relationships with me, man. You know, videos is cool. I can make my own videos. Mm -hmm. But the relationships with people is what I like. 100%. It's what I like. It's what, what is valuable to to us you know what i'm saying that's why i love this yeah. this is a combination of both a yeah. podcast is both video content for everybody to use and share sure. and it's also lasting relationships yeah you get text messages from guests that have previously come it, on and it, it's, it's it's you actually do you spend an hour and a half you know time with somebody yeah. you get known pretty well we 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 spent we have even even me and andrew you know i'm always on the phone i text all these guys mm -hmm. hey man i appreciate you just random because putting me on your platform at that time, CT doing a video with me after he hadn't done a video with nobody in for almost a year and a half mm -hmm. after his heart yeah, issues and stuff like that. Like he had, yeah. there was no gain for him. Right. You know, yeah, I yeah. didn't have nothing to offer him. I didn't even have 10,000 subscribers or followers on Instagram at that time. Sure. I had nothing to gain from that. Yeah. 
And for him to do that, and then the relationship we built after, that was bigger than that. And me and him talked off camera about that. Big boy. Mm-hmm. I called Big Boy. Hey, man, can we do something? Yeah, let's go. Big Boy has done videos with me when he had other stuff to do, and he came, drove 40 minutes just to do content. Big Boy did something for me outside of me even knowing. Somebody else had to tell me that he looked out for me. So that's them cool. people like, that's relationships. The videos are great. Mm-hmm. But I'm also honest with them. Hey, man, I need you, man. I need some. I need to get some content out here. Let's do that. But I'm also the same one that if they call me for some, then we do it. You know, I support them too. And that's how, you know, Eric the trainer, you know, uh, that it's dude, a- it's, it's the only way you really can explain that dude is, is like a, it's like a professional singer at a talent show. How do you follow that? Mm. You know, the, his personality and, and how long was he in the industry? Oh, 30 some years. Yeah. Yeah. He so, used to train, yeah. um, his, he was personal trainer of, uh, Stace, uh, Kevin Spacey, I believe that was his first client. Yeah, he's, he's of all the he's of all the people, <laughs> but you know, but but that, but you know how awesome that question is. You asked how, how long was he around? Sure, yeah, it's perfect. because the dude, he didn't care about being out there. Uh-huh. Like most of these content mm-hmm. creators, he cared about being effective in other ways that doing stuff that other people don't even know he's done. Right, being a part of it's organizations like helping raise millions of dollars yeah. Yeah. for stuff that nobody even knows. You have to look it up. And like. Dang, he was a part of that. And um, I met him at the Arnold Classic, and uh, mm-hmm. me and Sam was eating, and I'm over the garbage can. This is a real story. I'm over the garbage can because I'm like, Sam, I'm hungry. I need something right now. And we eating, and I'm leaning over the garbage can, licking my finger, and he tapped me on the shoulder. Now, I had seen him before because he used to do the, like, on TV. Oh, yeah. He was good and I him. turned around, oh, and I looked at him, and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, why would you talk to me right now? Who is this? <laughs> so I'm looking at him, and he was like, hey, man. He's a good-looking guy, man. It's hard work to be like that. Hey, keep it up, man. Connect with me one day. I'm like, okay. And he walked off. I'm like, Sam, what the fuck? What's... <laughs> Damn, that dude look familiar. Chef Rush tagged a picture of me and him and Eric commented. Huh. And I said, that's the dude, Eric the trainer. But in person, he's a big dude. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize he was that big in person. So I hit him up. I said, man, Eric, man, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh no, it's cool, man. Hey, man, come out, come out, man. You need to come out and see me. Yeah. Uh, I love everything you do. You gotta come out and see me." And from that day forth, like he was a dude. He so would genuine. He would awesome he would guy. text me. You had to have a standard mm-hmm. response for him, an emoji at the end, something. Because yeah. if you didn't, he thought something was wrong. He was like, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on, man? What's going? On? You good?" Yeah, I'm good, Eric. And that'll be it, right? I could literally be taking a shit or something. I just didn't hit the emoji today. You didn't have to send him a shit. Here he emoji. come. <laughs> then he'll, he won a video call. <laughs> so the one time I did, I ignored him. He texts me. Hey, man. Answer that. I'm like, Eric, man. All right. <laughs> so he did it. So I took the phone up like this. And I, I was at our gym in the bathroom. <laughs> and I took the phone up. We, and he like, hey, what's going on with you? What's wrong? I said, oh, no, man, just lie. And, you know, gym is stressful. Our gym was very stressful. Yeah. You know, we yeah, was yeah. the only ones that ran it. And uh, I was just like, stressful, man. And, you know, just going through stuff in this industry. I was letting that get to me. Mm-hmm. And Eric like, hey, man, I don't want to hear that, man. You know how we do. And then he run it down to you. And then he ain't getting off the phone until you sound better. So then I figured this pattern out. Even if I'm having a shitty day and I don't really just want to tell him because it's not that serious. Yeah, yeah. I gave him emoji back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't be on the video call. But that's the kind of guy he was, man. And he, in a very short time, um, that dude, that dude is. We are, we have the privilege of reaping the. Uh, damn, that's crazy. We had the privilege of reaping the benefits from his relationship, mm-hmm. even moving forward. Wow. And he is just—he was just a bridge of so many good people. Yeah. Yeah. Where did he? Was he in California? Where did he operate mm-hmm. out of? Is that what Burbank. it was? Burbank. Burbank. Mm-hmm. That's right. I remember California. I had nice I had gym video. too. Oh, yeah. One conversation. Very, si- very yeah. similar to this. Had a back. Really? Yeah, had a back. It was more of like, because he took the Gold's Venice. You know, everybody back in the day was yeah. the Gold's Venice. Yeah. He got a baby Gold's Venice in the back, and he got a lot of cool, like, stuff in his gym, too. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was that was a tough one, man. That was That's He's, that's going to be tough for a very long time. Mm-hmm. That's going to be tough for a very long time. I don't understand either, honestly. Uh-huh. You know, that's something we won't ever understand. Yeah. So It's not our place to either, I don't mm. think. Yeah, we... uh. He was, you know, everybody has seasons, man. And, you know, unfortunately, his was up. But like I said, he's the one that, for for moving forward, yeah, the benefits of that man's relationships will 
has always yeah. gone, has always helped us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. Appreciate Absolutely. everything he yeah. did, even to guys who didn't really have interactions with him. It's cool. He laid yeah. the groundwork for everything we get to build on. Yep. Yeah. So that's outstanding. So Andrew, I mean, how, tell me about how you guys got hooked up. What? Uh, so how'd that, that get going? That's uh, that's a lengthy, interesting story, but I'll uh, we got time. I'll give you guys the rundown and uh, try and keep it with with you know the most important details. That sure. La- leave a few out here and there, and Kong knows what I'm talking about. We won't get into that, but uh, so uh, I when COVID hit, you know, I was a trainer. Um, obviously, the gym shut down. Mm. And so I had a little extra, I don't want to say time on my hands, but everyone did, you know, because you, you couldn't do anything but sit around, couldn't go out. Um, and myself, I, I like to, you know, uh, I take it upon myself to get as much education uh, to fuel the trade, if you will, or give myself the most tools of the trade that is possible. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was actually taking a class on, on you know, just talking about biomechanics and and it was actually we were it was covering the chest and the bench press actually specifically and it's talking about the movement and you know how you got to retract to press the shoulders and allow to protract and how it would be if it were ideal and and it, it, it just a kind of a light bulb clicked i guess it or went off in my head and i'm like you know what why not only why why do we continue to use uh, the same equipment we've been using for years if we have to do all this stuff but why is no one ever done a damn thing about mm-hmm. it you know so yeah and it, when you look at all the reports of uh, injuries and you know it being the leading cause of injuries in the gym every single year outside of maybe lower back yeah because you know you could equate that to squat deadlift all sorts of exercises even bench yeah. um i just i don't know i uh i had an epiphany mm-hmm. i guess and so i set out to to make a change and you know covid gave me that clarity you know because i couldn't focus on clients and things like that at the time so sure I, yeah i just dove into it at first and so i i spent hours and hours and hours in, in my garage actually in dallas and it was i mean probably midsummer when i decided to do this so it was the worst time possible and it was hot, <laughs> hotter than shit you know yeah, it was like yeah. probably 110 or more in my garage and so i'm you know i'm suffering through the day but I, i'm not even thinking that i'm just like i was determined to figure it out because I had this this picture in my head of how the shoulders are supposed to move mm-hmm. and it, what what how much better the exercise would be, you know, if if we're, our body was able to move the way it was supposed to mm-hmm. instead of getting pinned against the bench, which is what happens, um, and which is why there, there's so many injuries. So you're you know you're lifting weight, you're putting it in your hand, you're putting stress on your joints, and that translates all the way down through into the shoulder, you know, mm-hmm. and then the shoulders taking the brunt of it because it's not moving. Definitely. So that's a problem and most people are unaware of that and so regardless of the fact you know i wanted to make uh make a change and see see what i could do to create a, a, a piece of equipment that would not only let the shoulders function the way they're supposed to but also the other element as being a trainer i'm sure you can relate is teaching people and instructing them proper form and technique mm-hmm. getting them to actually feel what they're supposed to feel is so key and that's why we use all these cues and things like that because you know tell someone to go down sit on a bench and bench they're not going to do it right definitely so i kind of took the biomechanics aspect and the teaching aspect and i wanted to merge it into a tool that would not only position somebody properly but allow their body to function the way it's supposed to and regardless of the fact that they have any knowledge of it or not you know, they're they're going to be able to perform the exercise correctly because it forces them to. Mm-hmm. So the minute you lay down, instead of wiggling around and fighting the bench to get into position and doing all this crazy acrobatic shit, mm-hmm. you're you're already in position because the the, the equipment is designed to put you in position. Mm-hmm. And so then, what that does is obviously inspires confidence because if somebody can execute correctly, that's it's going to build their confidence in what they're doing. And that a lot of times has uh, major impact on consistency in the gym and you know if you feel confident in what you're doing naturally you're going to want to continue to do it because then you'll start to take pride in what you're doing so on and so forth so sure. uh, i kind of i try to piece all that together in the you know again one piece of equipment that could ultimately you know at least deliver correct form on the bench mm-hmm. and and i've you know and i was kind of looking back on my years as a trainer and it's like, it so frustrating because it's like Dude, it's so simple, man. Just do this. And but you you tell them to do what and they do complete opposite. You know, so Sure. Um 
you know, and then I kind of stumbled across the fact that it can be a bench is obviously used for more than one thing. You can, you're laying on your back to execute a, any sort of press or fly or, mm -hmm. um, you have some leg press. Exactly. So any bench is used for, you know, chest supported exercises for back as well. So, you, I mean, you got, when I mean, you're thinking equipment, pretty much every piece of equipment, unless it's a free motion or just a cable mm -hmm. has some sort of bench involved. And, Usually, yeah. and, and so if you look at how off the ergonomics of the equipment is, it that's a, that poses a serious problem and then it kind of as i started to do it almost turned into a research project on my own thing mm -hmm. because it made me discover the fact that there's a there's a posture problem and a setup problem that uh, kind of plagues the industry it's never really been paid attention to you got you know prime and other uh, equipment producers producing this awesome equipment that has all these mechanical functions you can manipulate the strength curve mm -hmm. um you know, all sorts of things. Yeah, all Prime's things. awesome. Oh, I love their equipment. Man. Yeah, they got good stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um, so this this creation is the launch pad. That yes, is your yes. creation. So, so what yeah. what it's designed to do is instantly transform a bench into an ergonomic, a correctly ergonom ergonomic piece of equipment that mm -hmm. puts you in prime position to execute with with uh, correct form, mm -hmm. efficiency, and, and and it's supposed to improve the safety. So when your shoulder's moving the way it's supposed to move, you're not going to have the the shearing and the impingement. Mm -hmm. Impingement leads to the first. It's the first of your problems. If you're starting to get impingement, you're probably already fucked. Yeah, you know to be honest. And so what what that also uncovered is the biggest thing with the shoulder. As soon as you interrupt that movement, the mm -hmm. natural um, rhythm that occurs, the scapular humeral or glen glenal humeral rhythm, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Yeah, it's interchangeably used. That's automatically leading to problems because then the rotator cuff muscles are working harder mm -hmm. and they're getting as soon as they get stressed it, they actually put at risk to tear and exactly all that kind and of stuff. the integrity of the joint is breaking down and it just leads to a whole host of problems so if all it takes is a simple alteration to the surface that we lay on why has no one done it why the firm firm surface that, so there's a good reason for that. Actually, somebody I was talking to Brandon about this mm -hmm. last night. Actually, somebody commented, "Is that just a hard foam pad?" Like, first of all, it's not foam. No, it's it's what is it? It's polyurethane. So Got it. it. It's the equivalent of truck tire rubber, basically. Mm -hmm. It's about that hard. Yeah, the major heavy equipment rubber. And the re and when I worked with my engineer to uh, actually come up with the the appropriate uh, material for it. Mm -hmm. We had we knew that it had to m maintain its shape, otherwise it would have no effect. It would just be like another bench. So sure, it has to be hard because that shape allows your shoulder to move. Yeah, but without that, if it collapses, then you're just sandwiching your shoulder again. You're just kind of mushing two pads right. on yeah, the top of the bench. In order to it. Yeah, it provides an exoskeleton right. for a proper so, bench press form. Exactly. Yeah. No, I I like it. I I've, I've used it now since y'all sent it out to me. It's probably been what a month, something like that. Uh, cool. Maybe two, maybe two, Close to that, a couple yeah. months, something like that. Yeah, I like it. Kong, what have you? Uh, why, why come on board with this kind of a product? What, what, what has it impacted for you? Initially, I well, at first, it it was when I first started my YouTube channel. Um, Benjamin was the last on the list. Like I hate adventure, mm -hmm. and I used to, I used to burn my rear, or not rear delts. I'm sorry, my front delts. Mm -hmm. Like burn to the point of where it's like I'm scared I'm gonna tear something. Mm -hmm. So uh, after meeting CT Fletcher, he he was talking to me about the 225 rep off, mm -hmm. and he's like he seen you know how many times you can hit it, and I said man I can hit a 50 tired. But <laughs> to be honest, can you really? You hit 50 to 225? I just did a really I just posted a video yeah, today. I did a really good bench set. The other day, because I never, I never, I always consecutive reps. It's I, I, I always, he had to go to. Yeah. But the thing is, when I first did it, yeah, when I first did it, see, me and Sam was never one press maxers anyway, so we weren't like killing ourselves. We was always reps anyway, mm -hmm. and when it was just, it was very uncomfortable yeah. to where I couldn't. I was like, hey, man, we. I mean, he'll tell you, we bench once a month, yeah. and uh, I got into a situation where we, I won't. We was gonna do a. 225 rep off with a gentleman and he used it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, well, you know, the art of war, man. Let's so to get, get a little background you on know, this particular time too. Let's, let's see what's up. He used the launch pad. Yeah, he, he was, was, he was, he was working with him. Got it. So I'm watching the situation go down. I'm like, okay, well, he can hit it more than me. 
Yeah. But why would What's he use secret? that? Though? Yeah. So when I got it, I didn't understand. I'm, I'm not the brightest grand in the box <laughs> when it comes to any science or nothing like that. It's okay. I gotta feel it. Yeah. Uh, so, but you, but you at least are open to learning. Yeah, I'm. That's, that's the thing with me. Is I'm, yeah. I'm love like being around Seaman and those guys. Oh yeah, all day for me. Love Seaman. Um, I went to. I went and got it, and I didn't understand it. What I did know, because mm-hmm. I didn't bench with it first, I did incline dumbbells. And when I did incline dumbbells, I was like, damn, dude, I can't even do the hundreds? Oh, yeah. Like, it was like preventing me. It, it does cut. You. Yeah, it, 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 it cuts down on your it's weight. It's very time. much. you. But so what I was like, okay, well, well, I'll just keep it at the hundreds then. Cool, whatever. Uh-huh. And I did four sets with the hundreds of like 12 or 15. Uh-huh. And then I was like, damn. And my upper chest was always the hardest, hardest to target. Uh-huh. So I was like, wait a minute. Okay, so it's putting me in the right position. Mm -hmm. So again, Hayden doing chess at that time. Wait a whole another week and a half. I said, now I'm gonna do it with the bench. And when I did it with the bench, and I was like, all right, that's cool. So it took me probably about three weeks to use it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, man. I don't feel my shoulders no more. Yeah. So then I didn't understand it. You know, so I'm like, what's going on? I'm not using anything, (laughs) no rubbing, no cream. So then I hit him in a DM. I'm like, bro. Tell, tell me what this is doing. Yeah. Even though all the information is out there, I don't feel like looking at it. You tell me what this <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, I'm the same way. And do you mind if I cut in, cut in real quick? And so he told me. Yeah. And so, I said, ah. And then I explained to my situation. So I was like, dude. I, right. I, I basically told him, I was like, hey, man, it's it's opening up the movement of your shoulder. Yeah. So it's actually requiring you to engage your stabilizers, which on a normal flat surface, you get that artificial stability. So mm-hmm. you're not having to work those. Um, and, and it, you know, obviously is destroying the shoulder as a result too. So right. now that it's moving, you you have to, it's going to give you a ton of proprioceptive feedback. And so not only is that going to correct your form, it's going to make you correct it. And it's going to, it's going to feel a lot harder because, uh, at first you're not used to it. Yeah. It's, and, it takes, there's a learning curve. Mm-hmm. Anybody was, who tries this needs to learn this. Yeah, I didn't like it. You have to be aware of that. When I like, first tried it, I didn't like it at all. Right. Oh yeah. We seen the video. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. we were, we, we, on that, we, were we, we were prepared <laughs> to come here for the fight. It, 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 <laughs> took, it took a couple times. Well, wait, wait, you sat on it wrong. Did you know that? Yeah, after you told me, yeah. after you told so me, it, you're it like, it's not wrong. I was like, no, all right. As soon as I, as soon as I, what I did, I have that. Well, if, if, so, for those who have no idea what we're talking about, yeah. the bench press is, the, or the the lunch bed is divided into three sections. You got the head, so the mid, and the top. Of it while we're talking, maybe. yeah, that, you like that way. Me. I can give you a, like a visual, and then we can the website. Well, yeah, that would work too. Uh, if you go to just the pro- product page, probably be your best bet. Uh, so go to uh, the store, and then and then just click on the launch bed. There we go. And then the third picture from the left, yeah, Eli, that's, that's a good one right there. So, All right, so you got three sections. Right. Top, middle, and bottom. The bottom adjusts and comes outward. Right. Why have that? What's so, that for? Everybody's body is different. Uh-huh. Uh, your torso could be longer than the next guy. You could be taller or shorter. Okay. So I wanted it to be able to be adjustable and and uh, applicable to anybody regardless of their height or their size, or the size of their torso. So. That allows you to move the uh, lumbar support, which is designed to... Uh, Can you to go back pr- to the picture, bud? Yeah, so I'm trying. The uh, the lumbar support, which once he, uh, he gets, Eli gets the picture up. There you go. Um, it's supposed to sit in your lower back. You're not supposed to sit on it because it's designed to push your sternum up. Okay, so you sit your butt on the bench right. just like you would if you were so that, mm-hmm. exactly, gone without exactly. it. And then okay. you just lay back with that in the, in the curve of your lower back. Okay. It's designed to stabilize the spine and force you to activate your core muscles, but also push the rib cage up on an angle, which if you look at the best performing bench pressers in the world, mm-hmm. they, they have mastered the art of getting their chest lined up with against the line of force mm-hmm. so their sternum is almost in a straight line against the bar as it comes down so and that re- that allows them to be stronger and recruit more of their chest gotcha so what i wanted it to do is naturally put people in that position so they don't have to understand it but they're going to feel it yeah they don't have to and, and so understand how to place coach, their yeah. box and so lock like, it in there. for example when a coach is trying to teach you this they don't have to say shit they say lay down push like jl said makes you a yoda coach yeah. so you know, yeah. with that being said, um, 
you know that that's what that was designed to do and then of course you got the angles and that's allow that allows the shoulder blade to, to move as as it's actually designed to do naturally so is your head supposed to rest on the flat portion on the very top or is it supposed to be on kind of the downward curve uh, no it rests on the flat portion it rests on the, the flat downward portion. portion at the top of it is actually designed for prone exercises so when you're laying face down, yeah, on the bench, okay. you put your chin there, okay, so Got that it. it it correctly aligns the spine, so that there's no I haven't tried the neck back. yet. Yeah, so uh, and very and, cool. Yeah, and so it and on the flip side, when you're laying face down, it's gonna for, force your shoulders into slight protraction. So when you do a pulling exercise, it's forcing you to execute with tension on the muscle to start. Interesting. So, like it. So I, I was trying to. You know, take the learning curve away from a lot of major exercises or key exercises we use in our daily routines mm -hmm. and, you know, help deliver better, more efficient results. You know, because if you're executing properly, you're going to get results. You're going to be safer. This this is your company, Advanced. Right. Okay, so how, how long has this been in existence? Is uh, this your... Roughly two years. Okay, cool. So, what did you do before the launch pad? Did you have other I, equipment? I was, uh, no, the launch pad was my first. Very first. I've got other that I want to come out with, but one step before the other, you know, because it's pretty it's, good. First, uh, I appreciate that. Pretty good. First I, crack at it. I yeah. didn't want to just put a piece of shit out there. I, I worked with an engineer to perfect it before I let oh, yeah. anybody touch it because, you know, safety is very important. And also, you know, people are going to judge based on. The first yeah. Impression. So <laughs> that thing's a damn tank though. I've run it over with my car. It's, it's it, strong. It, it will it's, not. It, it's been through a car wreck in his car. Seriously. Yeah. And it, it literally flew. When crap. that happened? Yeah, that was no, that was that was Ashley's car. What happened was, <laughs> it's, it's, she, I feel she, bad she for got, the car that got, you hit. <laughs> she, I got projectile. She, man. she got t-boned and it, it flew out of the car. This is what's funny. It was in the bag. So it, it flew out of the car. She yeah. didn't fly. I was like, no, it flew out of shit, it flew man. out of the car. It went through her uh, backside window. And slid across the street like a damn artillery. But the bag there. never wow. was recovered, so that was interesting. But the launch pad had no scratches on it, <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, dang, it's was she okay?" okay? <laughs> no, she she was she was beat up a little bit, but the launch pad was cool. <laughs> I, I, t I told him, I told him, hey, no. the launch pad made it. it I was, told him, hey man, put that in the trunk next no time. Doctor I don't need any liability, <laughs> no doctor business. No doctor, because we didn't know what we she had it, so we was like. And I'm looking at the pictures of the car. I'm like, hey, man, uh, the launch pad went out the back window. Yeah. It was the perfect the shape, of, shape of it. Yeah. And she was like, that's the thing, too. No shit. It's the perfect name. That's for why the to bag is gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's made out of aluminum on the bottom. And you too, can bring so. it places. It's really right. portable. That's, that's it the folds. Other. That's the other thing. People right. don't, you can't see from that. It so that's why there's that separation between the tor the main torso. Mm -hmm. It's because it has to be able to fold in half because efficiency and being able to transport it. I wanted to take pretty much everything out of the equation that would make people not want it. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah, it's too Because if it was all one it piece, it'd be tough to take places. Right. Exactly. It'd be very tough to take I, the gym. Exactly. And it, it, it would prevent a lot of people from even considering it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the thing is people were saying, it was funny because I was telling him, people was talking about, uh, uh, well, actually, I've never heard. I've just seen people was talking about the comfort of it. I was like, well, shit, the seatbelt ain't comfortable. But for the safety purposes, we should wear them. Right. And yeah. and that was what it was for me. I didn't. I'm not saying I'm going to lay on there and get the best night of sleep. Right. But I did. I do <laughs> know that what it has, what yeah, it right? has <laughs> done, what it has done for me. And like I said, my progression is all on YouTube. You can see it. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? From top to, top to front. And like I said, it was literally to the point to where my shoulders would be so bad. And it's, I, I'm not injured. But really? it was just it was just fried. I was just done. Just when I reach a certain number, it's like, dude, put this up before you get hurt. Yeah. And from then to now, and I'm like, dude, now when I get on the bench, because I work out, I bench twice a week, mm -hmm. depending on you know if we got something going on. So these last three three or three weeks, I've been benching twice a week because of the event tonight. Um. So I'll do one day with the launch pad, right. and then the one day without it, and I don't feel it no more without it because now I'm used to. The using it and getting my body in decent yeah. position, and I will uh, say that you do get used to it after a few yeah. times. You got to do it a couple times to get used to the difference so, between that and like yep. a Thompson fat pad, where you're just like chilling. Right. You right. When you it. take it off, it it really that's like I don't feel I do not get burnt at all. It's all saw chest now, so, so that's why my numbers climbed up far as the reps that I was doing. Sure. What's and, interesting uh, too, and I don't mean to interject here, but I kind of do. Um, it's, you know, when you think about it, when your shoulders are open oh, and your chest is open up like that, 
it, you're getting the range of motion you're getting is very similar to like if you're using a, a camber bar uh-huh. where you're going deeper. Right. Yeah. Because now you oh, yeah. all of a sudden you've got this open your shoulder blades open up and you're moving big time. So that's not, that's gonna make it harder. What uh, on top of the, I was gonna ask, what did Seaman think about that? Because he doesn't he, go past ninety. He actually didn't have anything negative to say no. about that. He he loves it. He said it goes direct. It's in almost direct line with what he. His training uh, uh, protocol, so... Well, but he wouldn't experience that, what you just said. He doesn't do that range of motion. No, but I think what he, he was really liking about it is the ability to move his, uh, the scab. The scab, yeah. And so it has the uh, your strength training and almost doing rehab at the same time. Yeah. So, or, or prehab, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. And he um, is, man, he... It is funny because, you know, when you do when you do content, when the cameras come on... Mm-hmm. Like we kind of knew Seaman was 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 a good dude because he wasn't even in Atlanta, mm-hmm. he was somewhere yeah, he was I somewhere know. else, yeah. and he came back, and that was a last minute. Yeah, he was supposed trip to go to, Athens, to We were all, we were already yeah. in Nashville to gotcha. go see Mark Lobliner and uh, Gunner. I forgot Gunner guys. Peterson. Gunner yes. Peterson. Yeah. yeah. So oh, we were already going to visit Peterson. those guys. Gotcha. And I've been saying since day one, like, dude, we gotta go see Seaman. Uh-huh. We got to see Seaman, and that it just came about that day. And yeah. he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be in somewhere. I believe he was probably an hour away." Sure. He's like, "I'll meet you guys back there." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, we gotta go." So we drove nine hours, eight hours to Tennessee, uh-huh. four hours to Atlanta the next day, and four hours. It was a hell of a driving yeah. ass. Dang. Well. Wow. <laughs> I drove but, to uh, Texas, so I got. Yeah, he drove to Texas, so we yeah. got about the same distance. And uh, when Seaman did that, I was like. Uh, you know that's cool and then when he he got on it and he was he started explaining it and he, talking about it then he showed um us some protocol his some of his protocols offset oh, training which bro. i i will never not warm up with that again his offset training it really for bench i haven't tried it with much else but with bench i will never warm up with nothing else i've had offset training you're talking about with the plate on one side right, right. that's the what best people who bench don't know days. what that means yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i've had so my for warming up you throw that. what like a 25 on one 25. side 25. i wouldn't go more it, than that i've amazing. seen it happen yeah, yeah. i was, uh, he said uh, the most he's ever seen is a 45 on one side. Was, uh, the so, the, yeah, the guy yeah. uh he wrestled in wwe uh sam what was the name uh shit anyway he trains with Seaman? no he's out of cincinnati he did it with a forty-five. Oh, now, okay. now again, I don't know how efficient it was because I want to feel everything. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, it looked good, but I wanted to actually. Who cares feel how it looked? Right. Yeah, it's got a function so, to it. But he did it with a forty-five. I tried a thirty-five one time, and I almost ripped my hamstring out of my asshole. So I'm like, you know what? I'll keep it. I'll keep it at the twenty-five. But that he showed us that and a couple other techniques, and we did it with the launch pad. And I was like, dude. This is on point. So Seaman's good, and, and and even after he he would hit me up like, "Hey man, hey you guys got a good thing." And he was talking. Uh, we we I'm supposed to well, trying to set up for me and him to go live and talk about his offset and training. Yeah. Because again, me not understanding how to articulate exactly mm-hmm. what that is doing. Right. People he's, always ask me what I'm doing. I'm like, I, I don't know, dude. I <laughs> I get frustrated. So I'm like, dude, I don't know. Just do it. I don't care. What you, I don't care. But uh, so I'm gonna go live with him so he can explain it. But. That also helped it, uh, helped out a ton, and I used that routine with the launch pad, too. That's part of the reason I want to get him on here. I feel like he's a bit misunderstood on social media, especially because... I didn't know it was that bad, yeah, man. Like oh, dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until, they, until they said that. I yeah, didn't know it was that bad. Oh, yeah, people hate him. Wow. It's like, it's a lot of... And it's and it's not just, it's not just like, people who don't know anything. There are decently I've reputable people mm-hmm. that harshly criticizes me. Really? Harshly. And they, they really have no grounds to do it either. Like, because he did study it. Well, yeah, okay, he, but so did a lot of us. So did, they probably did too. There's a right, lot of it, train of thought when it comes to how he's training and, and specifically some, with... Maybe some bias for him, him towards his own. And he is towards, selling, own. he is selling a training methodology. And when you're selling a training methodology and that is your, that's your thing, that's your baby... Oftentimes, the tenets of that methodology can sometimes get in the way of what's the best thing the for and and, yeah. and again, this is why I want to get him on here. I don't think he is as strict with his no, tenets he's not. not as he all. appears on social media. Right. Not he, at said all. he said that. Yeah, he yeah. told us straight up. Like, sometimes put the, the dude, crazy you down. just try it. That's all he says. Yeah. I just tell people try it. If you don't try it, okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, he has. He doesn't have that at all. Mm-hmm. Like the, how strict that is. I didn't. No. I didn't picture, he didn't. I've only seen yeah. a couple of videos that he's you sent me that people criticize him. I'm like, and that's brutal. Oh, we get hit up about him. 
all the time. Really? It's See, all the time. <laughs> that is People crazy. really go in on and it. And so it's bad. why I want to get him on here. It's There's something about actually having just a long format discussion where we can field questions from people or we or I can ask right. all the questions that they've always asked me about him. And I, I rip a lot of his movements. I like him. I do a lot of mm-hmm. his stuff here. I think he's got a really creative mm-hmm. mind and he's got a good library of different movements right. that he does. Uh, I tend to find my way kind of into the middle ground, that's, that's which is... Uh, Which is sort of why you don't go, you don't go as viral if you're a moderated individual with training. If you if you find that hey he does it right on this area, he he does it right on this way, you Mm. know, exercise. Everyone's different, and every athlete is different. Depending on the exercise, it'll be different. Hey, you know, this industry is is about you know the corniest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. For people who really got a purpose and people who are trying to push something like this, the ones that, this, is, this is this is this is the yeah. legit well, cartoon I'm network. Actually kind like, of, yeah. Seriously, Cloud. and which was which is why I'm glad that you know I'm you know I'm to the age that I am, being 42 and in it because I don't care about certain stuff. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like social media. I was still me without that. Uh-huh. My name didn't come from social media. That was given to me years ago when I was you know finding me. So it's like. Who who these people become during this realm mm-hmm. is who they have to continue to be, mm-hmm. and and that's one thing with me and Sam. Yeah, started time doing casting. Con- yes, we started doing the content. It was like do this open book. You know, it's when it's when you meet on, me, we just this genuine. is who it is. Yeah, I uh-huh. see. We see the thing with the Liver King. It's like people yeah. want to talk about him lying and his strategy. Where did that come from? It came from the damn character. Yeah, it came from having to be somebody, and now I'm so popular I can't back out of that. Mm-hmm. You get lost in it, and you get lost right. in it. Yeah, Jim Carrey said some of one his uh, one of his speaks he's uh, uh, speaking engagements. He said, "Either you be who you are, I'm not gonna get it right, but pretty much, or you die with the character you created. You know what I'm saying? And mm. if you die with the character you created, nobody really knows who you are." Yeah, and that's Liver King's biggest problem. He 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 leaned into the caricature. He more leaned now. into the. We don't know anything more. about that guy. Like honestly, I just found out his name was Brian because his trainer was talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now I, I feel like I know Brian. Thing. Now I feel like we're good. But <laughs> the Liver King is like so. When you do that, and again, I feel, I feel bad for people who have to go through that. I'm not saying what he was doing was mm-hmm. correct at all, but when people was talking about, it, everybody talked about he lied about steroids. He lied about steroids. I mean, that's everybody pretty much who. A lot of people do that. My problem was where did it come from? That's why I speak a lot of mental health stuff. Mm-hmm. My problem is where did that actually come from? That came from you being Halloween 365 days a year. <laughs> that came from you getting popularity and you now the lights and the, you rich before this. Why the hell did you care about anything? You, you care about being so popular. You already was successful. And when people do that, and I'm telling you right now, the individuals that I've had my little back and forth with in the industry mm-hmm. are all wearing a 365, not all, I've had a lot. One in particular is wearing a Halloween costume. Mm-hmm. This is not him, that's why I would never refer to him. I only did that today. Yeah. His name is Charles to me, not Kylie Muscle. His name is Charles. Because Kylie Muscle is who we see. Charles, I, I knew Charles. Yeah. I don't know this dude, so. I think the, <laughs> I think there's a big difference between people who wear the character and people who just kind of wear their own skin and i think the people who are in their own skin tend to last longer you're seeing that a lot and and use jim carrey i mean he would often and loudly speak about the dangers of living as a character and how it impacted him and how he you know he's gone through large bouts of depression and he's just all that kind of stuff i think the guys that at least who i gravitate toward i mean use like like mark bell type of thing i mean he Mm -hmm. he is himself i uh, did you we, you went on Power Project, right? Did you? I can't no, even remember that. Not yet. You got to no, go on no. there. You got to go on there. Mark Bell's awesome. Mark Bell's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I went on. He's he's exactly who he is on social media in real life. That's yeah. who he is he off camera. Too, yeah. yeah, you're not going to hear that about someone like the the Liver King. I mean, who knows who he's like off camera? His family doesn't seem like they really want to be there when he's <laughs> filming. <laughs> so he they, they look like they're off. They look like, they look like hostages. They do, they do not like right. they're having a good time. <laughs> and that, they're and like, that, dude, if we fuck this video up, he is going to just light us up when this camera's How many takes? And I'm telling you, like, this is why I say all the time, man. This is why I say all the time, you have to have good people in your corner. And you have to have people that's like, hey, man, what the hell is you doing? You know uh, what I'm saying? Keep each other and and, and that's that's why me and Sam been friends since 94. Mm-hmm. Because that is what he, that is what we do. You know? Yeah. And like I, I'll, Even what Sam wears sometimes. Like, what the hell are you wearing, man? 
<laughs> yeah, it was, is that is that we was running around that's in the bar right like, Sam, Sam had a horrible shit, wardrobe man. we was growing up like Always come on you're never gonna get laid with that bro <laughs> <laughs> that's why it took him till 22 to get laid but I'm just saying so it was when it, see I I got a mic he, he can't say shit back you can't, but, yeah, that's, that's wrong that's, that's, that's but, uh, wrong but no but that's how we operate and we 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 ran along with a lot of guys mm-hmm. And who couldn't take that, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew my mental health. I was always like, oh, what'd you say? I'm I'm gonna kill you tomorrow. I'll, I'm gonna eat your heart. You're gonna <laughs> die. And then Sam like, hey man, chill, man. What you, what you, why, man? You know, relax, dude. You, you sound stupid now. You're, you're dumb. All right, man, you know what? All right. Where somebody else didn't wanna, didn't wanna challenge that br- brass approach. Uh-huh. Because they feel Living like I was going to turn on them. Living in an echo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where really, is, you were saying that. He, you know, he's, he's surrounded by people. If, I mean, somebody who somebody who quite literally implements the strategy that the Liver King team did. And, yeah. and just because, just because people, said it. people yeah. knew what he was doing. They, he lived around with a bunch of yes men. They're like, oh, this is awesome. Exactly. Get going. Dude. Keep going. Don't stop. This is a good idea. I tell people all the time. I talk about this. A uh, I talk about this a ton. A ton in my content, like, dude, you have to have, you have to have somebody check you. Mm-hmm. It has to be somebody who does that because if you got a bunch of people who say, "Hey, man, that was cool. I love what you're doing," and you, How you, you know, in your that? heart, yeah. it's not right. You know what I'm saying? So when we stopped going to bars, and I was a terrorist. Like when the when the police come out, I'm like Be careful saying that they come out like Brandon. <laughs> you're right. When the police come out, like Brandon, go home, dude. What are you doing? Like that's that's embarrassing. It's not like I'm cool. Man, go home. You know what I'm saying? And, and the stuff that the the stuff that we was had a bunch of dudes around us, and they was like, "Yeah, you ready to go? Why are you going with me to do this? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and y'all know when I get there, it's gonna go down. So why? And then you look back at it like, damn, man, y'all really didn't want us to win. Mm. So when we separated ourselves from that, when we stopped doing that, mm-hmm. man, I can't, t- not one of them ever came and visit our gym, the first gym ever. Yeah. On this island. They'll come there and drink, though, but they haven't come in and step foot in the gym. Sure. So then you realize, like, and, you know, that's what I hope people like Liver King realize, is that the people who agree with that, they like, oh, shit, I'm pack their shit up and they go about their next venture. Mm-hmm. You now can't show your face. Ruined your, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And that's yeah. what happens to a lot of people. You can't show your face. Now you cannot show your... You can, but it doesn't have the same effect no more because nobody trusts you. Nobody believes you. No. And you weren't by yourself doing that shit. It's people that was around you that we didn't see that we would never see. Yeah. And they also going to take a couple of dollars to say, hey, man, I told that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And you know they didn't. Playing both sides, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, it, like I tell people all the time, we can all focus on what he was lying about, but focus on where he got that shit from, and that's here mentally. He mentally he got lost in this shit. Mm-hmm. This internet shit is bad, but it can be. You know, it it yeah. can be bad, and it can be. That's why I say we always we 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 do content with a purpose, and this is who we always gonna be. People meet us. Right. That's what we're gonna be. Well, I mean, if you don't lie about who you are, you never have to worry about exactly. That. Yeah, you don't have to worry about just, that. Right. That's the biggest thing I think to take from that is, I mean, if you're someone like me, I, I honestly can say I wouldn't want to do anything with him. I wouldn't want to do a brand deal with him. I wouldn't. I don't care yeah. if it's worth a lot of money. It's not. He has now no reputation at all. Now he has a reputation. He lies. I mean, and, and you saw bad. Carnivore MD. No, 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 I mean, he had to come out and distance gotta, himself. Yeah, and, and, a lot of them feel bad for yeah. him, man. That's saying, tough. A lot of those guys, like Joe Rogan, don't want to do a podcast with you. Yeah, like nobody so wants to touch him. He was yeah, uh, talking you know about I mean? that recently. They had uh, he had more plates, more dates on. Yeah. You see that one, that episode mm-hmm. with, with Joe? Just a couple of days ago. And, he, and was, um, yeah. he was saying, "Oh, oh yeah, the Liver King's been knocking on the door. He's been trying to get in here for a long time." And to Joe's be like, honest, "I ain't gonna have him on. No way." And to be honest, that Joe Rogan don't things. need it. Rogan likes, but man, that would be a lot of fucking content. Man, that'd be oh, great yeah. content because yeah. Joe will tear his ass up. Yeah, so but Joe for Joe to say, "Man, I don't need that. Man, I'm good." Man, that's so you box yourself out. Yeah. For, you know, in less than a year, it was only like what a year run. He was only doing that for about a year and a half, uh, maybe. Hundred million, a couple, of, yeah, hundred million, a hundred million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's unfortunate, man, that people get it. And he's not. The, listen, I'm gonna be honest. He's not the only one, nor is he the worst one. He ain't gonna be the last. one. I'm gonna be honest. He's no, not yeah. the worst one. Yeah, he's not the worst one. I believe it. The, the other person just saying is relevant, mm-hmm. but he's not the worst one. Sure. And so, 
you know, it's, it's, it's sad. That's why, you know, again, like you said, people that think the way we do, we don't get those viral videos. Mm -hmm. I can do something nuts right now and create a whole scenario and get some viral shit going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's just not how I want to do it. You know, I feel like longevity come with the length of the process, too. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it is. If our process is longer, then we we, we have longer longevity. Yeah. We can do anything. Like, everything we do is what we do. We was clowns in high school. We sat on the bus. We sat on the corner cracking jokes. When you see us do little stupid skits like the Ohio State one, <laughs> you know, that, that's just what we do. You yeah. know, so it would never be outside of who we are. Sure. And therefore, you never be challenged. That's why I started putting my government name on there. Because mm. I want, I, hey, look, this ain't, ain't no characters. This is who I am. I only put the Midwest in front of the Kong no nickname just out. because I want people to know where I'm from. Sure. Uh, other than that, this is, who, this is what we I do. I can prove that you're telling the and, truth, too, if they need. Yeah, they Google, know, Google. live by that. So. I, I don't have nothing to hide. Right. No. I got children. I've, you know what I'm saying? I got baby mamas. They, you know, they love to, <laughs> they love to, but I don't have those problems. You know what I'm saying? I have, I have good people around me, even if they're not, you know, in relationships with me or whatever. And that's why I say that, like, dude, people who don't even get along, like, who never got along with me can say, like, yeah, man, you know what? He's a good dude. He's an asshole, man. But back in the day, <laughs> I like what he's doing now. Yeah. I've got actually people DM me saying, hey, man, remember, man, you, you know, you chased me out the bar the one day, man. And, but look, man, hey, I see your shit. You know, you do good shit. You know what I'm saying? So because because when you grow up, you also you also men knows like, like I, you know, I haven't reached out to nobody, but I speak through my content so people can know like, hey, man, he is good now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you and you got to you got to humble yourself and do that. I know, I know that word is to is illegal yeah, to use in some terms. Like humble. humble. Oh, you don't right. you don't believe in yourself because you're humble. What the fuck? What? Nah, like nah. I, I don't understand what goes on in this industry. So that's why I said like people y'all see me with they we, they we talk. Mm -hmm. Hey man, look. Either you we can just do content. I don't want to hear none of that other stuff if it's not that. Sure. You know what I'm saying? We want to do content. Let's do content. That's cool. Right. Mm -hmm. But don't 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 bro me if that's mm -hmm. not what you're looking for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, so. I, I just, I think you last longer if you are just honest, even if you wanted to lean into exactly. some kind of a character. I don't think there's really anything wrong with that, but I think you, there has to be a certain number of things that go wrong in a really, really unique <laughs> yeah. way to get as bad off to get as what the, to get yeah. black, to get black <laughs> ball, you right. can do a lot of, even some really shady shit yeah. and not end up in the pickle that right. Brian finds himself <laughs> right, in these right. days. Like you can show your face in public after doing a lot of terrible yeah. things right. in this industry. But I just think if you if you're, if you're genuine and you lean into it and you have people around you that check you, that's him. I've had some great ideas that weren't great ideas. Yeah. Um, you just have I to have to people. It sometimes, you know, but. <laughs> you got to have people around you that think differently and right. tell you when that's probably not the safest way to go. And it's and it's not easy. It keeps you level too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy. It's not easy to be like when you're excited about something like no one. Oh shit! Let me call Sam. I'll call this motherfucker thirty times. You're over. <laughs> No one loves to be criticized. Yo, answer the phone. Yeah, hello. Yeah. I can already hear he about to shoot my shit down. I can hear it in his voice. Hey, man, such, 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 such. Man, I, man, no, come on, man. You think that's a good idea? <laughs> Damn, I did 20 minutes ago. I did a few minutes ago. <laughs> so you got, and that's how we we don't jump off the bridge. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So be open to that. And when you open to that, you, like I said, you water the seed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't go to the store buy it and sit it there because those trees don't live that long. They they die before the ones that come up. I like Unless to watch it grow. One, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, that's what I'm saying. And then yeah. eventually, you know, you, you'll you get where you need to go. Yeah. But that's that's as a person putting yourself in front. When you put yourself out there, you got to understand that mm -hmm. people people recognize you now. They see you. Yeah. It's, and that happened to me. It was, I was shocked. Like when people, when people talk started to me, like, recognizing you? Like, hey, call. I just I, keep walking. <laughs> Hey, they yeah. pictures of you. Oh, what you what you need? <laughs> Dude gave me a camera. I took the camera and was about to take a picture of him and his girl. I was like, yeah, here we go. And he was like, no, I want you in. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, take a girl out and because <laughs> because that wasn't it. it I guess it That's just so never funny. was that. I speak a lot on you know mental health. I speak a lot on fatherhood. I speak a lot on you know especially mental health. Mm -hmm. You know especially mental health. We got these these new age kids. You know who. A lot of them never really went through nothing. And they talk about what the alpha is and this and that. You shouldn't have emotion. You shouldn't have this and that. And that's how I tell people, if you don't got emotion, I don't trust you. Mm 
Yeah. <laughs> because if me and you go through something, you might be like, yeah, I don't feel like that shit don't today, man. All right. That's for sure. Damn, you just left me yeah. out to dry because you don't have any emotional empathy towards me. So you just like, yeah, all right, yeah. cool, go ahead, kill him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I tell people I don't trust them. And they're like, oh, you, why you get so emotional and this and this? I said, man, that's why I said. And I had to slow my content down too. Mm. We're dealing with kids and, you know, wanting mm -hmm. to get into schools and stuff like that. I had to stop saying certain things. And I would be like, look, dude, I'll watch a Lifetime movie with a pink house coat on and fluffy house shoes, <laughs> eating chocolate ice cream and kick your ass, bro. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. You're still out. I will whoop your ass crying, bro. <laughs> like, we, we, grew up, we grew up in the hood, dude. That, that motherfucker that start crying, he's like, oh shit, that motherfucker. He going through some shit. Get the fuck away from him. <laughs> that shit, I'll beat your ass crying, dog. Like, God damn, man, what y'all mean? It's men. It's men. I, men. Every, we go through goes that. Through shit. You don't think oh, yeah. the Bottom didn't line. they didn't they say the military is the most brave dudes in the world? They see people die. They gotta rescue people. You don't yeah. think they got fucking emotion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like so, but that's the internet though, because they'll say, "Hey man, you're a punk because you cried." That military dude is awesome. He stand on stage crying because he had to rescue one of his guys, but he's brave. Oh, what the fuck is the difference? Mm -hmm. So sure, you know. yeah, no, I think it's. <laughs> definitely important to address especially as the younger guys coming up it, it, it's 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 very odd everybody in this room is a little bit old enough to remember kind of a time before the internet was the most oh, yeah, important sure. thing in right. the world for sure it's a little bit difficult to like I got nephews. They're both two and three. And so it's a little bit hard to think about what they're going to look mm. at oh, the world like when right. they're my age. Right. right. It's going to be different. It's very, it's important to, I think, make sure that everybody has real human achievements and difficulties achievement. and knows how to deal with both and on an emotional level. And that's the thing with, with social media is it seems like a lot of times it's just a highlight reel. Yeah. Um, it's just like the, exactly the highlights right. of everyone's life. And I think the people that get the most views are the ones that like kind of pull back that curtain and they show vulnerability and mm. that makes them relatable mm -hmm. and so, relatability. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cause everybody, like I tell Everybody's people something on their social media or like, you know, the character you put and out. And that's what I tell people. Everybody can lift weights. Mm -hmm. Anybody can lift weights. Mm -hmm. You can be handicapped. You can have one arm. They got bodybuilders. They got one leg, one mm -hmm. arm. Everybody can do that. What can you say to me? What can I hear you say mm -hmm. that make you relatable? Or that I can know somebody and I'm like, hey, man, you need to watch this. And that's the most important thing. Even though we joke a lot, but we say a lot of things to people. And that, that's what I like watching the comments and people, what they say. And what's even better is the is the uh, compliments in the DM, mm -hmm. and nobody says definitely nobody says other than a few times. Of course, they're gonna talk about the lift, but what people mo mainly talk about is what we say. They don't talk about what we right. do. Seventy five reps, two twenty five. I mean, you Google, you go to YouTube or whatever. It don't, it's probably only four people that did that. Mm -hmm. Right? Why is that cool to World record? It's right, cool that for that second. Right? Yeah. Damn, you did seventy five. All right. But they don't yeah, realize. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Significant. Though. He did. It's That's like, awesome. Right, but yeah, why? That means. But why yeah, I yeah. did the 75? That right. was the, that was the key to that. Right. I was stabbed nine times in front of that particular place. So seriously, that's also mm -hmm. yeah. That's also where we opened the first gym. So we took the bench outside, put it in front of that very place I got stabbed. We tried to do it. This the was the year. almost murder thing, yeah. right? I was just saying, these are two separate instances. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that, that, what? That only happened once. <laughs> that was, thank God that was only the one time. How, how, you got to tell that story. I, mean, I just yeah. watched that video of uh, 75. So, so that was what that was about. We tried it. We wanted to do it the 18 year anniversary, which would have been July 24th, but it didn't work out. So we did it in August. Okay. And it had, it honestly had nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it really was just the reps. Cool. Yeah. That's so cool you're still here to do it. You're right. That's cool. So we went outside, we took the bench out there, man, kids came around. We had a tent out there, man. That was the, the 75 wasn't even the best part of that day. But, but anyway, so that bar I was stabbed nine times. Um, and back in 2004, yeah, I was a bouncer, was a bouncer yeah. and it was, it was bad. You know what I'm saying? 2004? That was 2004. 2004. Okay. Yep. I was a bouncer on that island. Uh -huh. And, um, I was bouncing downtown Toledo, you know, and down in the, me and Sam both bounced. Uh, we, it was rough. Yeah. Bounced down Toledo. Was, we used to bounce down. He was on the east side of Toledo, which is, God forbid you even go over there. You know what I'm saying? They need, 
They need to separate that and make that a whole city. <laughs> but uh, no disrespect to the old five. I know some of y'all follow me. No, I'm just talking shit. No, y'all fucked up with me. But, but so no. <laughs> we don't date girls from the old five. <laughs> God damn, I'm about to get banned from Toledo. So, <laughs> so Sam was a, you know, and it was that Toledo only was, is a smaller city, so everybody would come there. So man, we had some rough ones. Uh -huh. And, you know, I got into it, a guy, he wind up, my buddy Scott Marshall, he was stabbed in 2003, four times, and he died in my arms. I was trying to drag him out the bar to the ambulance, and he literally, like, died like, on the, on, before he got into the ambulance, because it hit his bottom of his lungs. Yeah. So, of course, he drowned, you know what I mean, with the fluid. And uh, I was like, fuck this, dude, I'm, I'm done bouncing. And then my buddy Tiny, rest in peace, he uh, wind up taking his life. When was that? Uh, 2015, maybe. He wound up taking his own life. He was going through some depression stuff. Yeah. You know, kind of kind of got like Eric, always happy. Everybody loved him. And he, you know, not saying what he was going through. Sure, yeah. So he told me, he said, hey, man, it's this island. We make good money. Island where? And I'm, <laughs> at this time, 23 years old. Yeah. Never heard of an island in Ohio. Yeah. He said, man, you take a boat across. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. wait. You gonna ask the black dude to get on the boat, go across the water? <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, man? You gonna, oh, what? Man. <laughs> he like, no, man, this is what it is. So I wind up getting a job there. Yeah, and uh, I kind of wanted to be low key because it was just like a lot of stuff going on, and I'm sure Toledo people's gonna come. Then I get there, and I'm the only black dude on the island. I'm like, damn, this is <laughs> I couldn't hide for shit. Like, damn. So at that particular time, that item and why we did the gym there is because. I had never been around so many white people. Mm -hmm. And we talking about rich and they were like, hey, want to come to my boat? And uh, we This come, island is a yeah, rich yeah, yeah. resort island. So it's we come from the island, or we come from home where the boats was the little shit and the dirty creek that people used to drive and fish. Yeah. We go to a boat, we like, oh, that's the boat. This is like, <laughs> the only boat I seen that big was a love boat. When my grandma used to watch shit. <laughs> so we meeting people like that, corporate, uh, business guy, all these people. And I was like, wow. So that really changed my life, to be honest with you. Sure. That really changed my life because I'm like, man, I'm accepted here. And they think I'm cool. And I get to do cool things that I never would have seen before. Mm -hmm. And everything was great. 2004 that night, busy as hell. And we had a guy, Tim Sakula. He was at the front. I was at the front door because I like to be at the front door of busy nights mm -hmm. and then switch because I like to talk to people coming in. You can always see like, here come the asshole. Let me talk to him. Hey, man, you all right? How you doing? Some girls in there, bro. You know, and then they, they, they move switch. Sure. Tim was take Tim was was not going to bust a grape in the fruit fight. He was not going to grab nobody. Tim is. Tim is one of the guys that I was working with. Gotcha. And the, <laughs> the girls come up. She like, Brandon, listen, dude. Go get Tim. He can't be on the dance floor. And I walked through the crowd. Uh -huh. And Tim, and he looked like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, Tim, you all right, man? Man, I, just, I, I, I can't be out here. All right, man, go to the front door. Just make sure everybody cool coming in. Uh -huh. So the second I turn around, a light hit hit the thing, which is indication of a fight. They all fight, and I run to it, get it in the, you know, get into it. Mm -hmm. Guy comes up, and he's hugging me. And I'm standing there like, man, what are you doing? I'm like, I got you, man. You all right? And I don't know he's stabbing me. So when I finally, when he finally pulls back, the blood flew in my face. And I'm like, I look down, I'm like, this motherfucker. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, wow. wait, 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 just for no other, no reason at all? I mean, this guy, just, you just. High. You know. Uh, what? High. Bath salts? It's, it's, it's what the like hell is being that aggressive? And, I, mean, and I went scary. down. I don't know if I could stab anybody like. That is like, a very personal. That is an. Intimate right. thing Bob to Derek, do. Yeah, yeah. Especially the injuries that I obtained. Like, he probably didn't even know what he was doing. Dude, but he had to. Prison? He had to. Uh, you know, no? <laughs> you know. Oh it sounds like he had something. That, uh, that's yeah. a. That's a. No, no. Well, he, he, took, he, took a, he took quite a good beating. Which, you know, for me, you know, was better than him spending time in jail. At, at, at that mentality. But, yeah, he, he didn't go to prison. Uh, I think mm, I prefer yeah. both. Maybe back to back. Yeah, he didn't go to like prison. One. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. And so I put it this know. way, <laughs> put it this way. Dang. He, in that, in those times, 
It's not like that no more. It's a little bit more diverse. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. So he he got beat up pretty good. Broke his jaw, broke his ribs, broke his arm. They had, turned. You, had you ever? Did you see him coming in the door? Did you let him in? I mean, did no, you, nobody seen him. Nobody. Really? Nobody. It was so busy. Nobody recognized him at all. He was just in there. You know. Weird. And so he did that. I got life flighted, and I was joking the whole time because Scott went in a shock, and that's something that I instantly went to like, don't go in a shock. You're good. And I was joking and I was, they, everybody crying and screaming and shit. Oh my God. He's, you know, and I was, I was holding on to my shirt, but I thought, and then to kind of find out that was my damaged intestines oh. because I knew I had to keep my mind on something and, you know, touch something. So oh, I was doing that. And just, then, um, oh, that's a life flight to me and on a, on a plane, I'm sorry, on the helicopter, I was like, they was like, man, please don't go to sleep. You know, I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm all right. And I was like, Hey, could you unhook my feet though a little bit? I'm, I don't feel good. You know, like my legs is kind of going numb. He's like, okay. And even before that, when they was taking me and I was with the paramedic, he, I was like, nah, I'll be honest. Is it bad? He said, yeah, it's bad. I'm not gonna lie. I said, you think I'm gonna make it down? He said, hell yeah, you gonna make it. You'll be back. And they said he went back to the bar or sat at the bar and started crying. He was an older guy. So he started crying. He told him, he's like, he's not gonna make it. The paramedic. Yeah. He wow. was like, cause they was all, we all lived on an island together. It's like, yeah. Everybody knew each other. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we had a very good relationship with him. You know, John, we used to go to his house and barbecue, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh he was he he went back to the bar, he started crying. He said he's not gonna make it. He's not gonna he's not living. It's very bad. Oh. And you know, in the life flight, they don't got all the tools to no. make you you know what no. I'm saying? They don't have that. So I'm on there and I said, Hey man, could you unlook my foot? He unhooked him. And I said, uh about ten minutes later, I'm like, Hey, could you do it a little bit more? He said, They're all the way off. And I looked down and I raised my foot. Just on my mind. I was like, damn. And then I started getting cold. I said, can I have that cloth real quick? He said, oh, yeah. And I put the cloth on my head. I'm like, yeah, it's over. So I didn't know what dying was like. I just knew I didn't want to die awake. Like, I don't know if it was a process of awake oh, where you would see some, geez. you would see some weird how, shit awake. How far to a hospital for a helicopter? It was a, I would say probably, I don't know, honestly. Got it. It's yeah. not far, though, when you get up in it, because it's a 40, 50 minute drive. So a 20 minute helicopter ride. All right, 20 minutes. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was like, hey, man, uh, damn, this is it. You know, I, I knew, I was like, it's over with. I'm going to have to Dang. accept it. And then I closed, I wind up going to sleep. And then next thing you know, man, they pulled me up and I'm going up in the air. <laughs> and there was this light, you know, a surgery table got that big dome light. Uh-huh. And I'm like, damn, I said, you know, that was my first, my grandfather was a pastor. So he was deep in the church. So I said the prayer for the first time. You know, we always go to, we go to Christ when you doing some shit that yeah. you don't ain't gonna be like, oh my God, God help. Like, uh-huh. I ain't listening to you guys just now praying to me now. But, <laughs> so I was sitting there, I was like, Lord, please forgive me from all my sins, Jesus. You know, uh-huh. like, damn. Yeah. So they was lifting me up and I, this is, people laugh at this shit. I said this on another podcast, people thought it was funny. Right hand of God, I was like, damn, I made it. Cause I thought I was going to heaven. <laughs> Cause the light was so bright, you know, your eyes and she like, uh-huh. oh shit, like who about to help me in here? And uh, the doctor popped her head over. She like, Mr. Copeland, are you? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, so we got to do emergency tubal in this. And they were cutting me with, as I'm talking, you can see the blood squirting. Oh. And I was like, yeah. She was like, do you feel anything? I was like, no, ma'am. She was like, um, like you know, blah blah blah. We gotta do emergency tube. I was like, "What's that?" And he said, like, "This is there." And they just start putting all the shit up my nose, start yeah, sucking yeah. out the damage and testing for being poisoned. Yeah, and uh, Man, it's and brutal. it was bad. And I'm talk. She trying to get me to talk as she's shoving this. They're shoving the yeah, shit down my. So she's checking my pulse, and I'm going through all the like five people, like <laughs> doing shit to me, cutting me open, and I'm like. I'm trying to look down. She pushed my finger back. She's like, do not look down. I'm like, man, please trust me. I have to look. So I looked up. I was like, oh, I see what she said. That shit. Yeah, so she's like, yeah. she's like, is there anything you want to say that you want to talk? Let's keep talking. Because they didn't want me to go to shock, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. And I was like, hey. Uh, but they want you to stay away. They want you to stay yeah, away until away they got the gas talk. ready. And she was like, anything you want to talk about? You know, the, you have, you know, yeah, my daughter, she's, uh, you know, she's one, blah, blah, blah. We talking. And I was like, uh, you, do you, I got a question though. She's like, well, like, do you think I'm gonna get work Ms. for this? And she was like, oh, you got a very good sense of humor. <laughs> Next thing you know, they said one, two, three, and I was out. So it took me, wow. it took me quite some time to get fully. Uh, How long was your recovery? That was going to be my next question. About two years. Wow. To feel, to feel like <gasps> not the. Shoulder, sensation shoulder. in the stomach shoulder. and that where yeah. you nine, times, nine times in the abdominal in the, in the abdominal see if, if he would have went multiple places 
they said it was a you show me your horror I man. probably would have not had as much damage that that was there you know he'd probably poke 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 how I mean but how big are we talking a six inch butterfly knife yeah, show him your scar bro yeah six inch butterfly knife yeah hang on yeah it's brutal yeah so this is where he got wow. me. Yep. And, they Dude, and they had to go down through the front. It makes you cringe looking at it. So it was a six inch butterfly knife. And they said the, the more he went no. in, the deeper it went. So at oh. some point, he probably had his, almost his hand in there. Like wow. he didn't clean it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. So it was, uh, so, you know, it was about two year recovery. It was about two years. So. Like you explained to me, whenever someone stabs you, they're actually sawing. They're actually sawing. Anything that's, oh, anything that's in there. Think about that just makes you. They're sawing that. through. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. But it was. That's rough, bro. And, you know, it was it was a lot of sympathy checks after that. So you should try it. You should you should get a better knife. A better knife. <laughs> it was a lot of sympathy to that. It was and, a lot of sympathy checks after so, that. So so that so you had the the bench press challenge for yeah. seventy was as as a it was it was to bring it was awareness. eighteen years later okay. right. And they had a couple guys that was there. What mm-hmm. tied fitness to back into persevering through anything? Yeah, it was it was yeah. basically the message was, hey, look, man. It's not where you start, it's where you're going, right? Mm-hmm. So we came through that. We put the gym there. It was all tied in one video. Right. Uh, and the 75 was had nothing to do with necessarily that. Sure. At all. It's just yeah. a benchmark. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa. Hey, hey. Whoa. Eli. Whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 All right, so uh, welcome back. <laughs> thanks. Uh, we're gonna finish out, and then I'm gonna have to work to figure out uh, how to get it. So, get it back. Okay. yeah. So, <laughs> I feel like we have no, to, we have to address what happened. I'm sorry if you don't. No, I don't care. We have no. It's I think it, it keeps it interesting. Man. Okay. It doesn't bother me. I one like way. the authenticity, man. Okay, can I can I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna look back on this one day and laugh. I'm laughing already. It's I'm it, happy for you. So, <laughs> our very talented podcast producer Eli is not good with medical. Little disclaimer: uh, this episode probably should come with some kind of a warning uh, oh, for for the oops. content. Uh, mm-hmm. Eli just just came back from passing out. Eli passed out. Uh, so we. <laughs> Just look. I didn't even see it happen. I thought you were taking a nap. No. I look over at you, and you're like, "Oh no! Oh no! 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 No!" He's going shit out of me, man. That's yeah, right. Man. It was behind you. Yeah. You didn't even see I, that it was I going turn around. He's limp. I'm well, like, I thought I thought he was like, you know, kind of like straight. Like, oh my damn, tough, tough, tough crowd. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, as, as you're telling the story, I'm looking at Brandon. I'm doing like one yeah, of yeah, these. Yeah, like, let, let, let's like cut it. Change the subject. And his skin is turning translucent at the same time. And then I made the fucking comment. Hey, Eli, you should try it. It's not a sim. Oh, my God. And that's what he's like. This is such a bad time. Unbelievable. Man. I just, I felt like literally my face like went cold. I went limp. And I literally, I have no idea what the last like five minutes we were What's talking about. What's the next about. thing you remember? Dude, I couldn't even tell you. I, I think that's the last crazy. thing I remember was him literally saying exactly what he said. You should try it. I think that's <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I literally, so you, you were fake. <laughs> how, how long ago was that? I don't know. No, you, you, you lasted about that? three, four so minutes. He said after it. That. Then what do you remember? I just went cold. I, oh, I don't remember the rest. We'll be able to tell on the clock how much time went by. <laughs> so no Seriously. horror movies I'm, with shit. I'm just glad you're man. Okay, man, because that that was that was scary. Yeah. 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 Hey, well, like I said, I don't okay, do well yeah. with that. I don't do. I don't like when people pass. Yeah. And then, like I said, they were they kind. I kind of read their energy. And they kind of knew, like, yeah, that's why. It did. <laughs> but then I was more calm because, like yeah. I said, dude, if nobody knew it was wrong, yeah, I would have dove over the top of that and. Well, I didn't know if everyone was. <laughs> I would have fucking freaked out. I didn't know if everyone was in shock or what, but I. I would have freaked like, out, what? man. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I'm just not a medical person at all. Like Brandon was saying, if I get like blood work or anything, like I'm like panicking. That was just like I've never passed out before. Like, yeah. other than, unless I'm getting my blood drawn, like I'll be laying down. Like I might go out a little bit, but like never fully functioning and then just out that was a first for me that was that was weird <laughs> don't don't like it wouldn't <laughs> recommend it <laughs> sorry buddy Damn. so I, I i hopefully the audio is fine i'm gonna have to figure that one out 
but that's obviously never happened before where just we unplug the sound oh man I, I'm, I'm I, sure I, it'll come yeah, back yeah. I, I, either way I do think we'll be able to have the sound of the cameras yeah 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 there's always that's, the backup option obviously that's not ideal no cause you were but... you were good I mean until you, you know, until you fell pretty we, much the whole of we stopped talking cause everybody started watching you <laughs> yeah <laughs> from, from your guys perspective what did it even look like was I just I went up against the side you went up yeah. against the side and, and then just and then slid I just down, down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah completely limp yeah I thought honestly I like literally I'm not even joking I thought like you were sitting there like oh my god can we just end this please cause your hair was like this and I'm like, damn, um, no, he going to hit us. The tomatoes <laughs> the come back was, soon. The way he was slumped over and falling to the side. Was, like, oh, shit. I man. was fully Something entertained was until that, that part. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah, that was rough. <laughs> but I'm glad you're okay, buddy. Yeah, no, I'm, all, I'm all good you. now. <laughs> Well, guys, thanks for coming on. That was that was very entertaining. That's that. that awesome. Wow, did that did awesome. that have a grand finale? Yeah. If if I've ever seen one, where can people find you guys? Both of you. You can find me on YouTube, uh, Midwest Kong. You can find me on Instagram at Midwest underscore Kong. And um, I don't know how you find me on TikTok. I'm not. I really don't. But Working just put it. Midwest Kong everywhere. Yeah. It shouldn't be no more out there. It'll, it'll it'll pop up. Yeah, it'll, yeah it'll, <laughs> I'm working on my other social media sites, Facebook and TikTok. So, but you know, good. He's a awesome. I'm, I'm trying to get time. it. Trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can find uh, the company, my company, Advanced Muscle Mechanics. Uh, we're Advanced Muscle Mechanics on Facebook, Instagram, even YouTube. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, nice. TikTok, uh, I'm getting around to not, it. Not quite there yeah. yet. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but I know I have to be on it. So. Right. I yeah. got to say, this is one of the dopest logos. For uh, uh, You got credit I Sam it. with that, man. You got I a love credit it. Sam with that. That is cool. That's we try not logo. to. We try not to hope nobody acts about it. So, yeah, we, <laughs> got, we got credit Sam with that one. I love it. What What? What is it? I'm trying to. So it's a transformer. It's yep. like a gorilla head. Yep. Oh, it yeah. totally is. Yeah, oh, I love it. Really yeah, good. I do like it. I now that I see it, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And when he Oh, that's very cool. He came up, he sent it to me. I was like, Oh shit, this is it, bro. <laughs> this is it. This is it. So it's very cool. It's a lot of it's a lot of <laughs> yeah. stuff we can do with that. So yeah. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Very thank fun. Thank you for having us, good, man. Good Absolutely. conversation. Thank you for having us. We appreciate us. That was good, you, man. Good time, man. Anytime yeah. that we get to have the privilege to come on and, and tell our story and you know, talk about the product, man. We appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And this is a dope place. Thanks, yeah. bro. This is a dope place. This really is awesome. This is real sweet. You guys got to see it for yourself. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Thanks, guys. Absolutely, appreciate man. it. Yeah, thanks for coming in. All right, we'll cut it there.